In this class we want to talk about business skills. I want to start by talking about transferable business skills. These include all the skills that are necessary in all types of jobs, whatever field you choose. So transferable skills means the skills that apply to all types of jobs. So there are specific skills which apply to particular jobs. In order to do a particular job you may require particular skills. But transferable skills are generalized skills, ones that apply in all occupations. There may be skills that you have already demonstrated, but there may also be skills that you have never used before and which therefore require some practice. So transferable skills, although they apply to all jobs, there may be particular skills that you, you need to update and make sure you've got them in place. But they apply to all work, that's the point. Now transferable skills include a very wide range of, of skills. For example, skills for life, the skills to enable you to live your life, live your life efficiently and sociably. So it means being able to interact with people and being able to travel and being able to negotiate timetables and do all the, the, the functions that most people can do and the skills that are required for everyday life. Being able to shop and have basic skills about the house and about your home um, as well as the, uh, the social skills and as well as the career skills, the, the job skills. So these are the white set of skills we can imagine. But there are also vocational skills, uh, skills that are required for, for working um, timetable, meeting schedules, uh, work ethic, being able to attend work on time, and being able to apply yourself whilst at work, and having the ability to perform the tasks that are required of you. Then there are technical skills, the skills to run um, certain machinery and being able to work with certain machinery and uh, being able to undertake certain processes. These are technical skills but skills nonetheless which may be transferable. It's the ability to know what's dangerous and what's not dangerous and the ability to to use rudimentary types of machinery that most people could, could pick up and use. Um, it's the technical skills of how to negotiate the routines of the job, negotiate them in the, in the sense of being able to perform them, the, the basic functions of the job. And these will be classified as the, the technical skills. There are work related skills uh, which are slightly different, which are wider, uh, includes the, the skills uh, to communicate effectively with other members of staff, other workers, the ability to uh, pick up information and being able to work on the information, being able to assimilate the information, being able to analyse it and try to work out what's required. Uh, try not to be a burden to the line manager, try to uh, be able to function independently and efficiently. So these are work related skills. And being able to do some research. Um, individuals are good at getting information from them for themselves by and large. So it's a question of being able to take an issue and research what can be done about it. The research may be within the company. Look at what happened in the past in a certain situation and try and work out likely courses of action or good courses of action that may be applied in the future based on past experience. 
or perhaps look online or ask colleagues uh, perhaps ask colleagues who have encountered similar situations in the past and be able to collect the information so that there is um, useful information uh, available for yourself and for others facing particular situations. The computing skills. Um, we're living in an era where computing skills seem to be required for many tasks. Now it depends on the nature of the employment that's been sought. But by and large, any sophisticated employment, any employment which involves uh, a good career and involves good opportunities for progression and promotion will involve some sort of computing skills or some sort of technical skills in this area. So it's important to have some acquaintance with computing. Uh, communication skills, as I said, are important because it's important to be able to take a message and pass it to colleagues and also understand what colleagues are saying and be able to take in the information and be able to summarize it and retain it because colleagues don't want to keep telling you the same thing over and over. They want to be able to communicate a message. You take the message, you write it down, remember it, record it, whatever you're going to do so that you have uh, a record of this and again when, when this information is required in the future you have it to hand, it's been filed away and it's been retrieved by you and can be used by you in the future. Likewise time management skills um, being able to attend for, for work at the right time uh, been able to uh, take jobs and complete the, the, the tasks on time, meet the routines of the, the business in the time scale that's been set. Uh, so these are some of the transferable skills. Now what I'm going to do in a lot of the remaining part of this session is to skip across these again to emphasize them and bring them back to mind. So I'm going to start with the um, skills for life, the first one, and just run through these again quite quickly, but uh, just to reinforce what I've been saying. So, the skills for life. These are the skills that you will need throughout your personal and professional life. Now, these include communication skills, the ability to share or exchange information or ideas with others. Um, it's important to know what what is uh, appropriate information and it's important to be able to use formal language for example when writing letters or writing emails or when you're being interviewed or making presentations and it's also important to know when to use informal language like for example in conversations but when writing a letter it's important to be able to state the letter precisely and to the point so having good communication skills, good language skills, is very important. There's also the computing skills, as I said before, being able to use Word and Excel and PowerPoint and Access and being able to email and be able to research online. These are increasingly important and as time goes by, even more important because a lot of work is being done online and in networks. So the communications, the information and communications skills are very important. These technical skills are important. It doesn't have to be Word, Excel and PowerPoint as I've got there. These are um, the Microsoft uh, packages. These are the packages within the Office uh, suite of programs. Um, there are free ones available which are excellent. Uh, free office uh, packages that are, can be downloaded and they're absolutely excellent and do essentially the same work. So it's having the skills in whatever package uh, you use. 
It's also important to uh, have numerical skills. Um, being able to do basic mathematics is essential. You may not be required to use it, or very seldom, but when it's called upon you should be able to, do, to use basic mathematics. Uh, it's for most careers in, in business. Um, being able to do higher mathematics is not necessarily a requirement, but basic numeracy could be. Being able to work out proportions and work out discounts and being able to do percentages and uh, scaling and so on. Uh, that's that's essential. In the UK, a grade C in mathematics at GCSE is normally seen as a minimum requirement. Uh, in other countries, uh, employers will come to to know particular mathematics numeracy examinations and will know what grade that they will be looking for. But essentially. Uh, numerical skills are important. Now the next type of skill we met earlier was vocational skills. Uh, these are practical and manual skills that you will need to be able to do. Um, now you're on a course doing a BTEC uh, national qualification. And when I say national I don't mean the BTEC national qualification. Uh, I, I've been a bit obscure of this. You're doing a BTEC higher uh, qualification in business, but uh, there are uh, BTEC national qualifications which are under the BTEC higher standard. BTEC has got a long history of being able to blend practical and theoretical. So it's an excellent qualification for people who are seeking careers in industry and commerce. It's an excellent preparation, so you will encounter all sorts of tasks that people studying purely theoretical subjects may not encounter. You will be required to work in a group. You'll be required to uh, work out what is good pre uh, business presentation skills, being able to work out how to research, uh, to work individually, and you'll be required to be able to do viva voce examinations. So these are the type of skills that industry require and the BTEC qualification is excellent for this purpose. So it's all about preparing you for a career in business and therefore teaching you how to write reports, undertake presentations, communicate effectively and be prepared for interviews. Uh, so the BTEC qualification is the route to go in terms of vocational education as far as we're concerned. Now technical skills, well these are the specific uh, knowledge based skills that you require for your career. They may include the ability to use graphic design software uh, if your chosen career is in marketing and advertising or the ability to use certain machinery if you ch choose a career in engineering. These are technical skills, being able to deal with uh, perhaps machinery or software or being able to deal with the technicalities of particular situations. So it's, uh, it's a desirable skill uh, it's a transferable skill because if you're able to use let's say the graphic design software you may be able to work for any company in marketing or advertising who require those skills so it's transferable but it is technical it's technical and transferable um, you may have on-the-job training uh, while you're at work so uh, some of the technical skills may be passed on to you when you get employment within a certain area. The, the company will tell you you need an expertise in a certain software package. Well, even though the company is training you, they're training you with a transferable skill. Should you leave the company and join a different company, perhaps one of its competitors, you have 
the the skill that you've acquired whilst working for the first company. So technical skills uh, may be transferable. And there are lots of colleges and short courses and online courses that offer computer programs and will identify particular skills and offer training in particular skills and it's possible to gain access to these quite quite easily. Obviously it depends on where you live and uh, depends on the time constraint and resource constraints but uh, there's more and more being made available online uh, that's easy to access. Work related skills, well uh, these are skills that employers are looking for in a candidate when offering a job. Um, generally, uh, they are generally, I should say, those skills that you have never been taught. These are skills that uh, you were never taught. They just they just come to you. They're they're problem solving. It's your ability to take a particular problem and be able to solve it. You're not being taught how to solve all the problems in the world. So when you're confronted with a problem, a problem in the industry or in the office or in a particular engineering environment, you've got a problem, you try to solve it. So it's a work-related skill. Leadership is a work-related skill as well. Um, and taking the initiative and working in a team, these, these skills seem to emerge in people over time. So, work-related skills are not taught. Uh, you, you don't meet these at college or at school. You might meet them to some small extent. For example, in sport, you might have team uh, team playing, and some courses might require you to have, take initiative in certain ways. But it's not a very developed skill. There is leadership in those environments. But in industry, it is important. So these skills emerge within the person over time. They're important in gaining and maintaining a job. You may find that you're asked in an interview or job application form to give an example of when you displayed these skills. So it's important to uh, put yourself in a position where you are problem solving. Uh, where you're working for a company, there is a problem and you've come up with a solution and the solution was adopted and you can prove you came up with the solution and you can prove that it was adopted. Don't invent it. Uh, show a situation where you displayed leadership or you took the initiative and tried to solve some particular issue. The research skills will be able to research effectively um, does not mean simply typing the word or phrase into a search engine and trolling through numerous links. It's not going on Google and just searching simply like that. It's research skills are much more. Um, and the following are a few tips when improving your search skills. Now there are lots of videos on this course about research, different aspects of research, the types of research, research methodology that come up in different modules. Uh, so depending on which modules you've studied to date, you will have had a lot of exposure to these areas of research skill. But this is a different module, so let's just look at a few of the, the key points just to bring them back to mind here. Know exactly what you want to find out. It may sound silly, but you need to be very specific about your research. Otherwise, you'll find a lot of irrelevant um, information. So, know what you're looking for. That's the first part. Be very specific about what you're looking for. Don't just rely on the internet. Although lots of us use the internet uh, as our first point of call. Uh, books can be just as useful. A local library is good. Um, 
the press might be good, papers might be good, magazines. There are lots of sources of information. Um, many industries produce a magazine for the industry. Companies may produce information, updates and newsletters. So there are many sources of information, not just the internet, although of course the internet is very important. And don't believe everything you read online. Um, web addresses give clues about the information. And generally speaking, if it ends in .edu or .ac.uk, it means that it is an education site and therefore valid. So be careful about what you read online. Make sure that um, the, the site that you're looking at contains accurate information. Many sites may produce either inaccurate information or badly researched information. The facts and the processes may not be uh, well established, may not be um, reliable. And always include a bibliography for all research that you use in an assignment. Get into the habit of noting the URL for any website you use along with the author, the title, the place of publication, the publisher and the date of publication. Always give the source. Now as I said, uh, there are many videos and classes on research, research methodology, on research skills, research issues that are produced in other modules. So I'm not going to labour this one here, just that's sufficient to say that there are issues that need to uh, be looked at when we think about research. Time management skills. Well, um, be able to meet deadlines. Uh, being able to meet deadlines is is a skill. It's it shows that you are diligent, it shows that you are applying yourself and you're trying hard to meet the requirements of the job and you're putting yourself out. And you're, you're there when you are expected to be there. You have done a certain task when it was asked to be done. You've put the effort in. And that's good time management. So the secret to good time management is planning. Make sure you've got a, a very good planning system. You'll need to uh, ensure that you make plans when you're going to complete certain tasks and make sure that they are completed by the deadlines. You might use a, a Gantt chart for yourself. You might itemize what's required, the completion dates, so you know what's critical you know what's running, what jobs you've got running simultaneously. You know where to give priority. And you try to meet the deadlines that have been set. It's a very important part of being successful in a career. And ensure that the task you agree to complete are within your limits. Don't take on a job that you can't do. You're wasting everyone's time. They'll be waiting for you to complete and you can't complete it. You haven't got the ability. You, you don't know what the job is about. You have no experience in the area. You have uh, taken on something that you can't do. That's wasting time and it will cause problems. Not just for you, but for the whole organization. So make sure that you are capable of doing what you said you could do. and get to know what you can achieve and be ready to tell someone not the day before the, the final deadline um, tell them if you are struggling so as you work through a task and you can see the, the deadline approaching and you're having problems don't wait to the f final minute to say you have problems it's too late then, the deadline has arrived Confide in others that you're having problems and you need assistance, you need help, you need 
resources, you need uh, uh, support. Advise them as early as possible. As soon as you identify you have a problem, make it known so that support may come in and assist you to meet the deadline that you agreed to. Now these are some issues in business skills that should be borne in mind. Uh, some of the information here, as I said earlier, has been uh, almost exhaustively looked at in other modules, in other videos. So please look over those as a part of the research into this particular topic. But that's all I'm going to do on this for now, so I'm going to leave it at that and say thank you for watching.